Hello, welcome back to Thrive Yoga Fit Transformational Coaching. This is Erin. So I just got back from Vegas and boy are my arms tired. Just kidding. <laughs> I always have to use that joke when I travel. So yeah, I, I went to Las Vegas and it was the first time I had really been in Vegas. I'd, I'd flown out to Vegas before, uh, actually for a spiritual retreat that I drove right out of Vegas and into some boonie town. But this time I was there for RollerCon and I have recently quit Derby because it just, you know, wasn't in alignment with where I'm at, what I'm doing, which is cool. But I am really actually into park skating because I need to have, for me, a sport or some sort of physical outlet where I am challenged to face my fears. Now, yoga does that in a certain way when I'm in that sort of parasympathetic nervous system um, mode. And I can challenge myself and put myself into different shapes and kind of figure myself out. But I also need something that's a little bit more thrilling, more risk taking, more, I don't know. I've always been into full contact sports my whole life. And so I'm transitioning out of that now, which is just, I'm changing. I'm growing, right? Nothing wrong with those things. I, I played them most of my life, but I know that emotional safety is a very important thing for me and me honoring, respecting where I'm at on this path. And my most important alignment with myself is my relationship with universe, with God. So if I have something in my life that is conflicting with that path at this point, uh, it needs to go. <laughs> so anyways, park skating, I took a lot of really awesome workshops and met a lot of really awesome people. And now I'm a part of a couple of groups that meet up and do park skating, which is exactly what I wanted. I wanted to get motivated and excited about park skating again, which achieved. And I wanted to find a community, which I'm a part of two very, very active chats on WhatsApp for park skating. So again, hopefully mission achieved there as well. So that brings me to today's podcast, which is about adjusting the effort and intensity in relationships. So I have a friend who I've been friends with for a long time, and we've just sort of been side by side in different ways, even from across the country and into a lot of different things that are similar, like body work, massage, yoga, derby, a couple of other things. And I have found that the intensity of the relationship dial needed to be adjusted. Now, I'm a type, the, the type of person, the type of friend that loves big. I love with my whole heart and I, I can be intense. I can be an intense person in, in person as well as, a, I guess, as an internet, uh, iconical figure. So I like to connect. I'm sincere when I say, email me, I'll email you back or hi, I really appreciate and love you for listening to my podcast. It's real. <laughs> I love you. And, when you have to adjust the dial in a long-term friendship because life ebbs and flows, I just want to say you don't have to adjust the level of love. You can love that person as much as you want to. And here's the thing is if you're like me and you want to love really big, but the other person just maybe doesn't have the energy for that. They just might not be in a space in their life where they can offer that to you. If you take that personally, it will hurt. You'll make up all these stories about how they don't love you as much as you love them and how they don't care about you. And like, you can really go down this sort of rabbit hole. Believe me, I have. And what I've learned with my family, because my family is is like that, my, my siblings are very elusive and I love them very much. Even my eldest brother that was abusive to me, I still love him. Even the person who was cyber stalking me and treating me like garbage and trying to smear my, my name all over the internet, guess what? I still love that person. I get to love who I choose. And the thing is that I get to benefit from that. I get to have good feelings about that. I get to hold that person in my heart because my heart's big. <laughs> I can fit a lot in there, but I can still have boundaries. I can still respect 
where I'm at, where my emotional line is drawn, and I can make that clear. I can adjust the dials of effort that I put into a relationship if there's not reciprocation. And again, it might not be because that person doesn't want to. It might be because they literally can't. Because life is hard. Um, you know, raising children is hard. Uh, life circumstances hard. You know, people, sometimes we have people in our life that die suddenly. We have people in our life that, you know, change, that they adjust their internal dials just out of a sense of survival, right? And certainly I've been through periods. And if you've been listening to this podcast long enough, you've seen me go through adrenal fatigue. You've seen me go through the grieving of my mother. You've seen me go through a breakup, um, a divorce. You've seen me explore different aspects in my life. And so you've also heard my voice sometimes a little bit more bubbly, more filled with energy. And other times like barely being able to make it out of bed. And I've shown up the best that I can. I remember I got an email from someone who I like, I think I missed a week of podcasting and he said something like, I'm going to assume that you're back on drugs. And I was like, man, (laughs) I can't miss one week. And you think that I like slid back into something. So it was just very interesting. And I I addressed him. I was like, no, actually I was sick. (laughs) So I guess my, my point here is that if we can take a step back from our relationships and if there's a pattern of seeing that maybe the energy isn't reciprocated and we're hurting ourselves over and over again by expecting that person to show up in the way that we think they should, the way that we want them to, we are the ones that's hurting ourselves. So as far as the four agreements, don't take things personally. Don't make assumptions, right? That's two of the main ones there. So when we take things personally, it's our ego latches onto it. It's like, it must be me. What's wrong with me that this person doesn't love me enough to show up for me? And that, if you believe that story, that hurts. That hurts a lot. I went through that with my little brother. I just, I was like, why do you not call me? Like, like Christmas, birthdays, it doesn't even matter. Like just never, never calls unless like someone's dying. And I had to kind of accept that. And what I did was I just adjusted my effort dials because that helped me to find peace within me. I love, I love my, my brother. I love my whole family. Like again, even my eldest brother, second eldest brother, my sister, my little brother. I love my entire family, but we get to choose where we put our effort. And if for a long time you're not getting reciprocation and it's it's starting to hurt your heart a little bit, you can adjust that dial and maybe focus on relationships that have that reciprocation that you need. Because we all have needs. And again, I'm not saying turn down the dial of love. You don't have to do that. You can love that person. But relationships are made of reciprocation. Relationships are made of communication. Relationships are sort of give and take. And we know very well that if one side is a little bit elevated and the other side is down for too long, it starts to affect the quality of the friendship or relationship. So I think it can be a a smart move to address it, right? So address it in a kind, compassionate way. Let the person off the hook. Um, and then open up the door for communication, right? Maybe, maybe there was some softness that needed to happen on your part for them to feel safe to soften, right? Or, or maybe they want to close that door and that's their choice and that's okay. But on our end, not taking it personally, not making assumptions, and you can choose to love them. And it doesn't have to hurt because it, it doesn't have anything to do with you, right? So, for you, taking accountability where you can and where, where it's appropriate, but not taking accountability where it's not appropriate. Okay? If you put this sort of story in your head about, oh, I'm terrible and oh, I'm, I'm not worthy of love and this, that goes down to core beliefs and, and rooted subconscious belief systems, which, by the way, in my coach course, we address 
I am known for being able to navigate and show people how to navigate their subconscious belief systems. It's actually quite a quick process. I'm quite skilled at it. And I'm able to show you how to get in there in your psyche. And if you have repetitive patterns that you keep repeating over and over again, it's subconscious belief systems. <laughs> so I show you how to access them in my coach course. It's September 16th to the 23rd. We have three spots left. So we had five, now we have three. So if you're interested, reach out to me, Aaron at AaronCoach.com. You can also check out ThriveYogaFit.com and you'll see the drop down for um, Thrive Coach School. So, so yeah. You might have some friendships where you think about that person and you think, man, they just, they're just not there for me. Like, what's up? And if you keep expecting that and the pattern is that it's not happening, having a conversation about it without blaming, just say, hey, these are my needs. I'm getting the sense that maybe you don't have the energy. And that might be a favor that you do for that friend because maybe they're like, oh, wow, finally you, you hear me, Right. And, you know, maybe if they, they say, no, actually, I, I, I'm sorry it comes off that way. I, I do want to, I, I want to put more effort into this relationship. Then again, beautiful conversation, right? But bottling it up and not talking about it, that's going to create hurt feelings. And again, even if it's not received, right? So even if you communicate it and you text it or voicemail it or what, what have you, or email it, <laughs> very impersonal, um, you know that you tried. You know that you put that effort out there and how it's received is up to that other person. So go in with love, go in with compassion, know that everyone's fighting their own battle beneath the surface. Everyone has their own things that they're dealing with. Everyone has different health issues like the moon, the, the stars. Like, there's so much that can impact us, right? And sometimes the internal world becomes really hard to navigate. So that's why we use our tools. That's why I teach these tools. I teach the clear formula. I teach how to switch your perspective. I teach how to breathe. I teach how to process your emotions and so if you have some hurt and some pain around a relationship that you think should be different, breathe, take a step back, and go into that pain and that hurt. Hold space for it and see what statement is causing you so much pain. And then see if you can let it flow through your body, soften around it, breathe. And then you're going to come back into that space of love afterwards because it's in there. It just might be buried. So I hope that somebody listening to this needed to hear this today. I needed to talk about it and I try to share my cathartic uh, life experience and me applying the tools in real time. That's the kind of coach that I am. It's the kind of teacher that I am when I share my Dharma talks before I teach yoga. I talk about, you know, with respect to and an anonymity of a person who might be in my life, but I share a little snapshot of what's going on, how I'm dealing with it, what tools I'm using, and then the sort of takeaway. I hope that that's helpful for you. I hope that if you're listening to this, you want a teacher that's applying the lessons in their life and sharing vulnerably because I never claim to be perfect up here. I cuss, I fart, I snore, like, I do all the human things, and yet I'm st still a spiritual being, and so are you. So, <laughs> so anyways, I, I hope that you enjoyed this episode. Again, three more spots for Coach School. You can tune in virtually, or you can come in person. So I look forward to seeing you, and have a fantastic week. Namaste. Thank you so much for listening. If you want to support the podcast and if it's helping you, please consider writing a review. You can go to iTunes or Google Play, go into the search bar and type in Thrive Yoga Fit Transformational Coaching, scroll down and you can leave a review. This helps other people to find me as well as bumps us up in the search ratings. Also, this podcast is sponsor free, so that means we don't receive anything for doing it. If you feel so inclined and this podcast is helping to support you and you want to return the favor and help to support any production costs of the podcast, feel free to give a donation to a Venmo link, Thrive Yoga Fit, 
or paypal aaron at aaroncoach.com if you don't have the means don't worry about it we're not going anywhere you're all good but if you would like to give back you can give back in those ways thank you so much namaste